In this video, I want to talk about how we would draw the Lewis structure of sulfuric acid. Because this molecule can be quite a tricky one to draw. The first thing that we have to do is we have to consider the fact that we have sulfur in the molecule. And we know that sulfur is in the third period on the periodic table. And therefore, it's most likely going to exhibit an expanded octet. So we start off by doing our Lewis calculations. And, it, and uh, we'll be doing our uh, Lewis uh, expanded octet calculations. And these are quite easy to do. What we do is we just uh, we determine the number of valence electrons that each atom in sulfuric acid has in its ground state. And I call these the halves. And if we do this, we'll come up with a number of 32 electrons. Or 16 electron pairs. It doesn't matter how you write it. And now we can start to draw our Lewis structure. And if you distribute these electrons or electron pairs around, you'll get something that looks like this. Of course, the uh, sulfur will be in the center, surrounded by the electronegative oxygens. And this would seem like a valid way to draw sulfuric acid. But it's also possible to draw a structure like this. This also has 32 electrons or 16 electron pairs distributed around. So the question we have to ask is which one is the valid structure, the correct structure of sulfuric acid? In order to, to know for sure, we have to do something called um, formal charge calculations. A formal charge calculation take into account the charges on each of the atoms in this species and then compares it to the overall charge on, on the molecule. And we know that the overall charge on sulfuric acid is zero. So if we do our formal charge calculations, we should expect to get an answer of zero. So if we do the formal charge calculations for, for the structure on the left, Formal charge calculation for sulfur is just equal to 6, which is the number of valence electrons in its ground state, minus the number of, bond, of uh, free electrons that sulfur has, in this case it's 0, plus the number of bonds sulfur has in the structure, which is 4, and that's equal to 2. We do it for the other atoms as well oxygens and hydrogen. And I'll denote this ox because there are two unique oxygens here, uh, I will uh, denote one of them with an asterisk. And if you do those calculations, you'll end up with a formal charge on this species equal to zero. Now, if you do the formal charge calculations for the other species, they're done in the exact same way. But what you'll find is that you also end up with a f an overall charge of zero. So the question now is, which is actually the correct structure? We still haven't answered that question. Well, what you have to consider in a situation like this is the structure that the structure that has the central atom, the central atom in this case is sulfur. The central atom must have a charge that is all that is equal to the overall charge. So in the structure in the, uh, the structure on the left, sulfur has a charge of two. But the overall charge is zero. Structure on the right, 
sulfur has a charge of zero and the overall charge is zero. So with that said, we can say that this will be the correct Lewis structure for sulfuric acid.